Good afternoon, Mr. Pastor Sampson. We're going to do a uh, Bible study on the fallen man. But not only do we want to talk about fallen man, we want to talk about the fallen angels. Because if it had not been for the fallen angels, they would not be seen. So therefore, they wouldn't be fallen man. Now, there's, 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 a, there's a foundational principle that I need for you to grasp within your, your hearing. That is, all life comes from a holy God. There's no other God that can create life. So, out from God comes life. God is a holy God. Imagine this, if it was you. You were creating beings and people that you can't even look upon because they have been contaminated, deceived, beguiled, seduced. We're singing. And so that's exactly what happened in the Garden of Eden. An angel that was made to be holy and was a cherubim in the holy mountain of God called Lucifer became a fallen angel because sin and iniquity was found within himself. And, and, and sin and iniquity within himself caused him to fall. Now, a fallen angel or a fallen man cannot think on the level of a spiritual God because God is on a different dimension than the physical. Most men and women that you see down through the years operate by what they see by what they see, operate by what they desire with the eyes, what they hear with the, with the ears. So therefore, in order for us to be saved, we really need to understand the chemistry of what it takes to be what you call a Christian. Because a Christian just does not become a Christian because you hang the label. On yourself. This is my label called Christianity. I've got the label hung on, my, on me. But what has to happen if I'm going to be a Christian is the divine God, the holy God, has to supply me with the things that I need. And then I must exercise and practice and walk in the divine supply of what he gives me. Just because I go to a local church or just because I call myself a label that God has not supplied me to be. I'm still in a fallen state. So what we want to get, uh, you, get you to get an understanding of is that in the earth realm, if you're going to be the full part of the Godhead existing by the Holy Spirit, living by the Holy Word, you must be born again. And not only are you born again, but when you are birthed in, on that realm of righteousness, that you must from day to day continuously have faith to walk and exercise that you are on that realm. You just don't say, yes, Lord, one Sunday, and then you return back to normal because you return back to being fallen and you have been set free. You have been birthed forward, but you're refusing to come forward. So we want to look at how men and women, thousands and millions of men and women, are titling themselves, but they're actually not participating in the system. And so nobody wins in that particular area but Satan. God's wish is that all men will be saved. So now, what are you saying, preacher? Here's what I'm saying. There is no genius with a mind in the natural. In other words, thinking natural, I don't care if they are genius, can think on the level of God. 
unless they are born again. Now we're going to prove that. So fallen man, no matter how ingenious he thinks he is, cannot think or battle or even conversate with Satan. And that's what that's what's happening in churches. People are going to church and they think that they can sit back and because they are a part of this institution that I can war against Satan. You know, your tire is a part of your car, but it takes four of them for it to roll. But that does not make it a car. It makes it a tire that the car needs to make everything right. Just because... You call yourself a Christian. If you're not pre presenting yourself to be used as a Christian, you're fooling yourself. You're still in a fallen state. You, you haven't been set free. If you're living your life fulfilling every desire that you want to do and never allows God to use you from one day to the next, except for Sunday morning, you're still in a fallen state. Let us pray. Spirit of living God, in this the name of Jesus, first and foremost, Father, we come, Lord, to say thank you. Thank you for who you are, Lord. I ask that you heal, touch, bless. Open minds, open hearts, Lord, as only you can. Let your latter rain fall now, Father, of wisdom and understanding and knowledge, that your people may be glorified, equified, edified, to be reached up, to be birthed, to have an understanding of what it is you desire, Father, because you are the creator of all. You have a right. Father, you've given us the name of Jesus, the blood of Jesus. You've given us the cross, crucified and resurrected. You've given us the right to be born again. You said in John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son, that whomsoever believe in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Whomsoever but, Father, we're not reaching to get what you are offering. We're not building a relationship, and you are in love with us, but we're not loving back. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, show us what we're missing through your word, because your word is true. In the name of Jesus, amen, amen. Go with me, please, to 1 Corinthians. 2, 14. We're going we're gonna to start at 2, 9. 1 Corinthians 2, 9. 1 Corinthians 2, 9. We're going to deal with the natural man. The natural man lives as though there's nothing beyond the physical realm. The natural man lives as though there's nothing beyond beyond what they see, what they desire. This is it. Time, my job, money, ball games, football games, car racing. Uh, the natural man lives as if time in the earth is it. They, ha they live with no realization or no commitment to the God who created all things. They live a life like he doesn't exist. Millions of church people go to church and live a life like God does not exist. When you live this type of life, you are living outside of God. And what God has been constantly trying to do through Jesus Christ is bring you back in to the realm of holiness. Watch this. 1 Corinthians 2 9. But as it is written, but as it is written, eyes have not seen nor ears hear, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. For them that love him. Watch this. But God has revealed them unto us by his spirit. Oh, so he's revealing the things that he has to us by the spirit. Hold on to that. 
For the Spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. Oh, it's the Spirit, because God is Spirit. In Genesis, it said that Genesis 1, the Spirit of God was hovering over the water. So, it, it, it is saying God reveals himself to us by the Spirit. Let's read on. Because the Spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the Spirit of man, which is in him? Even so, the things of God knoweth no man, but the Spirit of God. So no man can know the things of God except for the Spirit of God. Well, how does fallen man, sinful man, lost man, receive this Spirit? I'm glad you asked. Romans 10, 9 and 10 says, If you will confess with your mouth and believe in your heart, that means you are being breathed again. You are being born again into the spiritual realm. That's why Jesus told Nicodemus, a man must be born again. You must be just like being born in the physical realm. You must be born twice if you're going to be a Christian to operate in the spiritual realm to receive what you call the comforter, the advocate, the Holy Spirit. You must receive that spirit because it is the only thing that can reveal to you the mind of God. Now, let's talk about this spirit. You remember that the Trinity, which is not in the Bible, but the revelation of the Trinity is in the Bible. Uh, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Well, the Holy Spirit was what Jesus, after he died on the cross and was resurrected, the Holy Spirit is what Jesus promised to send you as a comforter, as an advocate. You do remember that. Okay, so now, so 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 Paul here is telling you that if you want to be Christ-like, the first thing you need to get an understanding of that you in your birth physical state, your natural man, your fallen man, your sinful man, cannot receive the things of God. So I don't care if you go to church 50 times a day. You can't fulfill what God wants. Until you have been birthed by the Spirit. We're going somewhere. Because I need for you to get an understanding. Watch this. So now, I'm going to read this again. 11. 1 Corinthians 2, 11. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of man, which is in him? Even so, the things of God knoweth no man. The things of God knoweth no man but the Spirit of God. Okay, let's read on. Now, we have received not the Spirit of the world. See, we didn't receive the Spirit. The world, the world, actually, the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. Now, let, 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 me, let me show you this. The earth is the world, the Lord. This is the earth. We're going we, we're gonna to do this. We're going to take Satan's system, sit it in the world to devour, to seduce, to entice, to beguile you. So the spirit of the world is about the lust of your natural soul. Wanting to make more money. Wanting to have the hobby, the, the deer hunt. Wanting to go fishing. Ain't nothing wrong with these things. But when you exist just to do these things, you are existing outside of God. But have you ever stopped just to understand that every day you exist to go do what you want to do, it takes God to pump the next breath of life into you every time you suck in that breath, whether you saved or unsaved, God is standing there to give you that breath of life. He's a merciful God, ain't he? While you participate in Satan's system that he offered Jesus to worship him, he's not offering mankind called the church, or, 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 or should I say, the people that go to church just for entertainment that's got a habit of going to church, Satan has you participating more in his system because of the lust of your soul and the fallen state of your mind because it's natural and has not been birthed on a spiritual realm. See, because God exists on a dimension that's invisible. The things that come into the earth realm that be becomes physical or becomes seen comes from God. He is the ruler of all things. Tuesday night we was talking about Job and how that God had a hedge up around him. So now we are here talking about how it 
and what it takes for you to come out of the fallen state of being a natural man or a natural woman so you can live a Christian life instead of being deceived. You're going to church. If you're just going to church and you got a habit of going to church, you you you, you you're not you're not Christian. You're still in a fallen state. You're still thinking natural. You're still going by your five senses. You're not exercising the word of God. You're not living by the word of God. You're not committed to the word of God. You're not loving God. You're just existing. Do you think because you go to a building that that shows God that you love him? I'm trying, to, I'm trying to wake you up. I'm trying to wake you up to get you an understanding. I'm trying to wake you up to get you an understanding because there's a lot of people that have not yet. John 8, 32. It says the truth will set you free. I'm giving you the truth. If you haven't been set free from your physical, natural self, then your thinking is no more than earthly bound and we're going to prove that you become wise and you are nothing but a fool to God. I didn't say that. Paul said that. Paul says in the world you become wise. But actually you are nothing but a fool. I'm going to say this and then I'm going to read on. Any person, natural, with any kind of sense can look at all this majestics. How the wind moves through the earth. And how the trees bow. When it, the wind comes past, the wind is called the rule of God, the breath of God. And when the wind walks past that tree, that tree bows. And, 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 and so when you see the corn, the farmer goes in the field with a seed. And when you look, there's something coming up in the field. God has given that seed an increase because only he can. It takes a fool to look at all of the earth and never once ask themselves. Where did all this come from? So automatically, a person that exists in the natural is slow thinking because they never ask themselves the question, how does all this exist? So when you are in the natural realm, you find yourself asking the question over and over again, what's going on? Because you have no word to live by. You have no God to live by. You have no Jesus to be saved by, and you have no spirit to be revelated by. And let's read on. Now we have received 1 Corinthians 2.12. Now, now we have received, not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know. Listen, 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 listen. That we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. We receive his spirit that we might know. I wonder the, can the world have this spirit? That's just a question. Can the world have this spirit? Let's go on. 13. Which things also we speak not in the words which man's wisdom teaches. See, we Christians don't speak. In man's wisdom, Christian speaks in God's wisdom. You, 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 you didn't get that, did you? Christians don't speak in man's wisdom. We speak in God's wisdom. Did you just read that? Watch this. Well, which the Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit, teach it, compare spiritual things with spiritual we compare, we compare, we compare spiritual things with spiritual matters. But the spirit of the world cannot reach up on the level of the spiritual. It cannot operate on the realm of the righteous. It takes the spirit of God, which is called the Holy Spirit, to operate on God's realm. So now, so now let me ask you this question. Because you have hung a title on you, if that realm of the righteousness of God did not supply you to be any title that you put on yourself. If there's not divine supply from the Holy Spirit produced in that to get, for you to have that title, your title is, is no good. Not to heaven, not to God. It might be good for people to give you accolades. 
it might be good for people to give you honor, but if it's not good to God, you, your title is in vain because you're titling yourself. God has to spiritually equip you with spiritual things for you to be spiritual man. I'm teaching harder than you listening. Watch this. Let's go on. Listen to what it says. But the natural, the one that was born, I was born in 1955. I was born natural. I had to be born again. I had to be edified, taught, studied, listening to be brought to the level of where I'm at now. I have to do this daily. I can't do it once a week. I have to do it every day. It is a lifestyle. It is reality to live on that realm of the dimension of God in that spiritual understanding. It's an everyday life. It's a reality. It's not a ceremony. It's not a church service. It's not a good time. Christianity is a reality. It is a way of life. You eat, sleep, and breathe it. He go to bed with you. He get up with you. He walks with you. He have being with you. Let me read this one more time. But the natural man receiving not the things of the Spirit of God. For they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. But he that is spiritual judges all things. Yet he himself is judged of no man. For who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. The mind. Our mind, in order for us to operate, is of Christ. Our mind is of Christ. Now, you're saying, preacher, well, why, why are you there? Here's why we're there. Turn with me back to Romans 1. I want to show you something. Let's go back to Romans 1. And we want to look at 16. Look, look at Romans 1, 16. Romans 1, 16. Romans 1, 16. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation. To everyone, to everyone, to everyone that believe. To the Jew first and also to the Greek. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed, revealed from faith to faith. As, is it, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. Now, I read God's word because I believe God's word is his holy scripture. And I believe it's God inspired. I read God's word because I have to have faith in God's word. So to understand that I must have faith in God's word, here's what I do. I read, I study the word. The, the word gives me an increase. So being that the word gives me an increase, I study the word that I must live by, that I may exercise because... My, my, my supply, my way of life is revealed to me through the word. I'm set free through God's word. I am washed through the word. I obey the word. So therefore, I, I study the word so that the word can be revealed to me. Now, we want to we wanna go on and we want to learn, we want to see something. Listen to this. 19, Romans 1, 19. Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God has showed it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power in God is, so that they are without excuse. In other words, if you can look around in the world and see all this going on, all that God is doing, all his majestic, how he, rain comes, how hail comes, how the storms come, how life and how generations go through. If you can look and see all this and never ask yourself, is there a God, you are without excuse. 
Number 21. Number 20. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they that they are without excuse, because they, when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imagination, and their foolish hearts were darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like into corruptible man, into birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. See, what we do when the natural man, he, he, he spends his time to say he worships whatever his soul desires. He might worship hunting. He might work faithfully so that he can hunt all the time. He might work faithfully so he can have the kind of car or have the bank account or have the big house. But what does a big house, what does the hobby, what does money, what does you spending time uh, fishing, what does that have to do with God? So the, que the question would be is simply this. You can see all that God is doing. The earth been standing six or seven thousand years. Let me ask you this question. You have not come to a conclusion yet there is a God. Watch this. We're going to go somewhere. Watch this. 22. Professing themselves to be wise, they become fools. 24. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts. He, gave, he gives you up. To uncleanness, to the lust of your own heart. To dishonor their own bodies between themselves. Who changed the truth of God into a lie. Who changed the truth of God into a lie. And worship and serve the creature more than the creator. You spend your life worshiping created things. Creatures. Things that somebody had an idea and fixed to get your money. I need a bigger fishing rod. Uh, they came out with a new fishing rod. I need a bigger boat. I got to have a bigger house. I got to have a bigger car. So you spend all your time worshiping what your soul desires, but you have not recognized in your soul who God is, and God is the one that's... Supplying you with your soul, but your soul is in a fallen state because you have not realized to give it back to God yet. So you are trying to live with God's soul in God's time and God's earth, but worshiping Satan's world and the desires of Satan's world. You still following man or woman? You still following? Let's prove the point. Number 25, who changed the truth of God into a lie and worship and serve the created thing. 26, for this cause God gave them up unto vile affections, for even their women did change the natural unto natural use unto that which is against nature. And likewise, also the man leaving the natural use of women, burned in their lust one towards another, men with men, working that which is unseemly, and receiving themselves, and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error, which was meat. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge. All of this are happening because of this simple statement right here. And here's why we're here. Because they didn't like to retain God, 28. They didn't, and even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, you don't want to retain God in your knowledge. And we're going to look at what happens when you fail to retain God. You are in a fallen state. Without God, outside of God, you are in a fallen state. You are not in an upright, Christian, spiritual person when you don't retain the knowledge of God. How many of you looking at me? Exist going to church, don't even have a Bible, don't even open a Bible. 
Go to look at your pastor. Never pray. Never live by every word that received Matthew 4, 4. Never live by every word that received out of the mouth of God. But you just got a habit of going to church. You're not retaining God in your knowledge. So what do you have that pertains to God that you are believing in that will make somebody know that your life is Christ-like? In other words, the mind that you have, we just left 1 Corinthians, the mind that you have is like Christ. What do you have? What are you showing? What are you presenting to the word as a to the world as a representative of God? What are you showing a lost and dying world that you have that belongs to God besides just going to a building? What do you have? If you're not retaining the knowledge of God, turn with me somewhere. Let's go to Ezekiel 28. We're going to go to Ezekiel 28. And we're going to start at mm, We're going to start at 14. Ezekiel 28, 14. I, I want you to get there or you can write it down. Ezekiel 28, 14. Listen to what it says. Thou art the anointed cherubim. Talking about Lucifer. They covered, and I have set thee so. Thou was upon the holy mountain of God. Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Now listen. It's addressed as the Prince of Tyree, but I want you to understand Satan has many names. He, the Prince of Tyree, Bells and Bugs. Uh, uh, um, Satan, the God of the air, he has many names. So the Prince of Tyree is Satan. Now, it's going to describe him. Keep listening. Thou has walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Thou was perfect in thy ways from the day that thou was created till iniquity was found in thee. By the multitude of thy merchandise, they have filled the midst of thee with violence, and thou hast sinned, therefore I will cast thee as profane out of the mountain of God, and I will destroy thee, O covering sherb, from the midst of the stones of fire. Listen, this is why we're here. Listen up. 17. Thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. In other words, you exalted yourself. Because of your beauty. Listen, listen at what next. First thing he did, he exalted himself because of who he was. Oh, you ain't seen none of that. I know you ain't. He exalted himself because of who he was. Watch this. Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom. Good God Almighty. Did you get that? Let me read it one more time. First thing he did. Thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. You lifted your own heart. He's doing this within himself. You know, like people preach the word of God and they start talking about when I lay hands and they ain't got no power, God is giving it to them. They're using all God's stuff, but they want to, within themselves, they want somebody to look at them as if they've got something that they are doing. The devil is a lie. God does not share, share his glory. Listen up, listen up. Number one, thy heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Thou has corrupted thy wisdom. Thou has corrupted thy wisdom. By reason of thy brightness, I will cast thee to the ground. I will lay thee before kings that they may behold thee. Thou has defiled thy sanctuaries. By the multitude of thine iniquities, by the iniquity of thy traffic, therefore will I bring forth a fire from the midst of thee. It shall devour thee, and I will bring thee to ashes upon the earth in the sight of all them that behold thee. Did you did you read what it was? Did, did you read that? Turn with me to Isaiah 14. This is a fallen angel. We want to look at Isaiah 14. 12. Isaiah 14, 12. Isaiah 14, 12. Listen to what it says. Isaiah 14, 12. 
How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which did weaken the nation? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit up also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. Now, now we need to get an understanding of what Satan is saying here. Because this is, this is Satan being transformed into being Lucifer. I mean, Lucifer being transformed into being Satan. I'm sorry. This is Lucifer being transformed into being Satan. Listen to this part right here. I will sit upon the mount of the congregation. Right now, Satan has transformed himself into an angel of light. He has transformed apostles into apostles. He has transformed ministers into ministers so that they may sit over the congregation. Question is, if you were born in a fallen state, how do you get set free if it takes the truth to set you free? If Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, and you are not birthing, you're not birthed on truth, you're not enduring on truth. You're not continuing on truth. Then where are you getting your teaching from? What do you have that can set you free from being the natural man to being spiritual man? See, because you have to be born on a spiritual realm, on the dimension of God, the Father, God, the Son, through the gifting of the Holy Spirit. You got to be born. You got to have that spirit because the Holy Spirit is the spirit of adoption. If you haven't been set free by that, all you have is a title. You still follow a man or woman. You just got a habit of going to what you call church. You don't even know whether you're getting truth or not. So you don't even know whether you're being set free. Okay, let's, let's move on. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. Yet thou, have, yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. They that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee and consider thee, saying, Is this the man that made the earth to tremble and that did shake kingdoms? Is this the man? Now, we're talking about fallen men. There's, there's something that we need to get an understanding of. Sin is the problem between God and his creation. But sin was that was created in the garden by the tree of the knowledge of good and evil was not the first fall. The first fall was Lucifer becoming Satan. He gave sin. He produced sin in a spiritual arena in heaven. He passed it on, Revelation 12, he gave it to one-third of God's children, Revelation 12. So he swept. So when you start talking about demons and spirits and principalities, he has this well-organized army because he took one-third of God's children. They are called fallen angels. Wake up. When he went into the garden, he... Brought Adam and Eve down to his level by simply deceiving them of what God said. If you don't get nothing else from me but this right here. When he was in the Garden of Eden as the tree of the knowledge. Get this, get this. You remember it says his wisdom became corrupt. Okay. The wisdom he gave Eve was corrupt. It was deceiving. It, it was disobedience from God. And when Eve ate of it through her ear gate, what happened to Adam and Eve? God had put them in the Garden of Eden. What happened to them? They became fallen man. Sin was charged to them. Not just like Lucifer becoming Satan, just like the principalities, the rulers of darkness, the imps, and one-third of the fallen angels. Now Adam and Eve is now in the same state that Lucifer becoming Satan is in. They got a problem. Lucifer has became Satan. 
He's contaminated. He got sin. He's been condemned to die. He's been judged. Ashes for the burn and be brought to ashes from within. His, his army, that one third of in Revelation 12 that he took with him, the principalities, the rulers of darkness, the demons and the imps that he used to bring pressure upon you, to curse you, to devour you, to seduce you, to beguile you. Yeah, they're spirits. And they cause natural effects. So now, what are you saying, preacher? Here's what I'm saying. If you are sincere about doing something about your fallen state, if you have an understanding that, yes, I'm in a fallen state, what must I do? I'm glad you asked, because we still yet got time. You've got to repent of your sins and confess that Jesus is Lord and believe it in your heart and get up from where you're at. And every day what you need to do is you need to get your word, you need to be prayed over, and you need to find you a good Bible-based teaching church so that you can stay free. See, because you don't, yes, raise your hand and say, yes, Lord, and get on the truth one day and then let it go because this is a continuous thing. See, because God had expectations of you when you say, yes, Lord. God has spiritual expectations of you when you say, yes, Lord. You cannot continue to be in a natural world and just because you open your mouth and say you operating on a spiritual dimension and ain't been birthed on that dimension, don't have the spirit of adoption to be on that dimension, don't have no spiritual gifts, don't have no spiritual blessings, don't have no spiritual supply, but you just got a title. If the title is not supplied divinely by God, the title is zero. You know what zero is? It's just a space holder. If you don't have a one in front of it or a one behind it, a zero is priceless. It's nothing. It's no good. So you going to church because you got the biggest church in Clinton. That's no good, but you got to have a habit of going to church. That's no good. Have you ever showed anybody a righteous act? Have you ever loved your neighbor enough to pray for him? Have you loved your enemy? No, because you can't have a power to love your enemy without the Spirit of God. You ain't even got the power to be a Christian without the Spirit of God. You can't even be set free till you were birthed into his dimension. So the natural church cannot put you there unless you listen and go through what the, what the, what the pastor is teaching. So you can receive God as God, the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. Quit deceiving yourself. And wake up and understand. If you're just a church goer, you're still in the fallen state. You need to confess. You need to repent. You need to confess with your mouth and believe in your heart. And you need to fall in love with God. So that he may save your soul. This is Pastor Samson. We'll see you Sunday morning.